Hey everyone, it's Everything Neeb here, and in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing this laptop I have had for the last 4 years. This is the HP NV15 from 2013. Most of these shipped with an i7-4700MQ or HQs and GT740Ms in them, but for AMD fans, HP had a version of this laptop that shipped with an A10-5750M and a Radeon HD 8750M. So how does the a this all AMD laptop stack up in 2021? Let's find out. So, like I said before, I have had this laptop since late 2017. It used to be used by one of my family members before getting tossed down to me. The laptop isn't in the greatest condition. The left hinge has been broken by the original owner which is in turn breaking the chassis. There are also several keys missing on the keyboard. The most annoying issue about this laptop though has to be the fan. When in use, the fan can spin up as loud as this. Yeah, not the greatest thing in the world. It is hugely annoying. I have tried cleaning out the fan and replacing the thermal paste, but nothing seems to fix this persisting problem. There are some unique features to this laptop, however. It's an all-aluminum laptop with only the bottom cover being plastic. The laptop also has an at base amplifier by Beats. Yeah, you know the company that was bought by Apple? They had a contract with HP before, and some of their technologies appeared in HP computers, like this one. There's also a fingerprint sensor, but it's one of the swipe ones that people really hate. However, it is probably the best fingerprint sensor I have ever seen. The accuracy is unbelievable, and it is lightning fast. Now we'll focus on the hardware. This laptop has an AMD A10-5750M. Based on AMD's cluster multi-threading architecture introduced with Bolldozer in 2011, this Richland chip isn't doing the laptop any favors. The performance is similar to an i3-3120M, which isn't really good to begin with. On the GPU side, the laptop has the APU, the Radeon HD 8650G, and a dedicated GPU, the Radeon HD 8750M. The former is a Terascale 2 GPU, while the latter is a GCN-based GPU. This leads the laptop in an awkward position for drivers. The drivers have not been updated since 2015 because of the Terascale GPU. This means we are missing out on modern drivers and features at like Vulkan and DirectX 12. This isn't very ideal and very awkward as laptops without the H650G can get modern drivers to this day, and there are quite a bit of them. In actual use though, this laptop isn't as bad as you would expect if you can get past the annoyingly loud fan noise while doing anything remotely intensive. Otherwise, it feels really responsive, and even I am editing this video on this laptop. Yeah, bet you didn't see that coming. This laptop also used to have a 1TB HDD, but now it has an SSD, so it really feels snappy when loading documents or web pages or whatever you need to do. I decided to speed test how fast the machine could restart. Keep in mind, it had to close everything, load Windows off the RAM, and then load the machine back up in the restart test. And in my test, the machine was able to do all of this in just under a minute. That is really impressive considering how old the machine is. We can look at gaming as well. I don't have an impressive gaming benchmark with a lot of games because the SSD in this machine is only 120 gigs and I don't have an external hard drive so you guys can skip the gaming part if you want, I'll have a timestamp linked. So Rocket League on this computer runs at 50 FPS at lowest settings on the computer's 1366 by 768 display. Hooking it up to a 1080p monitor will yield less frames per second. I guess it's okay, but um, lowest settings definitely makes things look a bit blurry. The same story goes for GTA 4, not 5, because I couldn't, I wasn't able to store it because of the tiny SSD, which runs at 60 FPS for the good portion of 5 minutes. After 5 minutes, the computer gets so hot it is no longer able to continue holding up the same frames per second, and you'll see constant dips. And then finally, we'll, we have Minecraft. So at low settings at 1080p, Minecraft manages to pull off 100 FPS, which is, uh, I guess, okay. Is it good for gaming? Certainly not, but can you get away with it? Well, maybe. So finally, we're going to come to the verdict. Could you actually use an all-AMD laptop in 2021? Maybe and maybe not. 
you could get away with using the machine, but uh, an Intel machine with an Ivy Bridge or a Haswell processor would more like would likely be more effective than this, as this machine is really old and it has an AMD processor, which doesn't make it the most powerful in the bunch. So you could get away with using this laptop, but if I were you, I'd probably try and stay away from using one of these. If you have one of these at home, it's a good idea to use it, but because that's making use of some hardware, but if you don't have one of these at home, I'd best recommend you probably don't go out and buy it. If you can scoop one up for really cheap, like $100, maybe that would make sense, but this laptop is just way too old to do anything and it gets way too hot. There might be better models with better thermal conditions, but uh, otherwise, yes, there's nothing really uh, interesting about this laptop. Alright, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did like this, uh, consider subscribing and leaving a like on this video as that would really help me out a lot. And with that, I'm Everything Eve and I'll see you guys later.